Hi, I'm Andy Chick, Director of Marketing for Independent Electric Supply. And today we're joined by Jordan Johnson of Legrand, and more importantly, the Watt Stopper product. And uh, Jordan, it seems like every project we see now has some form of lighting control on. What, what is driving this? So the major driver, Andy, is really that uh, we're seeing that energy code nationwide is starting to require things like dimming in most spaces, definitely sensors or something to turn off lights in spaces, and then also cool things like daylighting control to take advantage of natural light, right? So okay. the lights automatically dim in a space, for instance, when it's the afternoon. Saving energy, which helps everybody. Absolutely, so absolutely. Recently here at IES, we upgraded some of our offices to the Watch Stopper product in order to uh, take advantage of these energy savings and lighting controls. And so Jordan, can you walk me through what we installed? Yeah, absolutely. So the ideal place to start, Andy, is really with the LMRC. Um, lighting Management Room Controller okay. 111. So this is a single circuit in, and then it wires out to our to our lighting mode. Um, so this would be one switch lighting control for you. Um, what's really innovative and very cool about this product is that it gives the contractor the ability to do a class one or a class two termination in terms of how they run their zero to 10 volt uh, okay. wiring. So again, a lot of contractors are starting to use a luminary cable for their zero to 10 volt applications. Right. So this allows you to use the lumen cable very effectively. The luminary cable is a cable that will carry both your line voltage conductors and your zero to 10 so that the contractor can do one run to the fixture rather than running it separate, being line voltage circuitry class one and then zero to 10. Okay, so labor savings as well. Labor savings, absolutely. Okay, so labor and energy savings. So this controls what? So this would control your, your lighting load in the space. Right? So you okay. bring your lighting circuit to this device and then wire out to the fixture. And then, then when the relay inside of this box is open, that light will be off. Okay, great. So um, so that's going to, again, turn on and off the, the lighting in the space. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a relay in here, right? When that relay is open, the lighting mode is off. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this will be mounted on our, our junction box above the ceiling, most typically. Okay. We'll cat five out, out of this device to our sensor. Okay. Um, next, for instance. Okay. Uh, this is an LMDC 100, so a dual technology ceiling sensor. So okay. what you have going on here, Andy, is you have uh, the transmitter and receiver, which is essentially um, represents the ultrasonic function of the sensor, and okay. then you have the PIR lens. So ultrasonic is great for minor movement, okay, and it really fills up the space. It's a volumetric um, sound wave, okay? So what happens is that sound wave leaves the sensor and it bounces off the floor and the wall and returns to the sensor at a constant rate. Okay. As you or I move throughout the space, that sound wave hits us and takes longer to return to the sensor, signifying, hey, someone's there. Right. Again, so a uh, cubicle office environment or maybe a stalled restroom, great for ultrasonic. Okay, so no nuisance of lights going off during the day. But that's just... the idea. Okay. And then you have the PIR. So PIR is a line of sight technology. Okay. Okay, and basically what it's looking for is looking for your body heat and the transfer from one segment zone to the next. So it sees your body heat in relationship to the background space, and as you or I move from one zone to the next, it signals someone's there. So why the dual technology? So dual technology really gives you the best of both worlds. Okay. In the event that you are having false triggers, maybe false ons or false offs, um, you can rely maybe more on the PIR if it makes sense or more on the ultrasonic. So it's really nice to, in one SKU, you get both technologies and again covers worst case scenario. Coming next here is the LMDM. Okay, okay. So this is our low voltage switch. Uh, it's Cat5 in, right? So Cat5 in there brings power to the device mm -hmm. and pretty simplistic operation on the LMDM. Okay, so a single press of the top of the switch will turn your lighting load off. A single press of the bottom will turn the load off. Okay. And then if you press and hold the bottom, you'll see a nice dimming function. And then when you press and hold the top, it'll raise the lighting level for you. And then you also have some nice status LEDs that will um, correspond to the lighting level in that space. Half the light bulbs. Half the <laughs> LEDs on. <laughs> nice. Uh, next is our uh, photocell. This is our okay. LMLS 400. Okay. This is a closed loop photocell. So basically what this device does is it takes a reading of both natural light and electronic light contribution, and then it will dim the fixtures accordingly. Um, for instance, so as it gets, uh, we move into the afternoon, right? The, the light level in that space will rise because the sun is moving higher in the sky. Right. This will automatically dim your fixtures. In a number of spaces, now you have daylighting control requirements driven by code. Okay, okay. And this is easy to install as well? Absolutely, just a Cat5 cable in there and you're ready to rock and roll. And the Cat5 cable goes to? The LMRC, it could, or it could go to the sensor or the switch. Okay, so they're daisy chain, yep. essentially. DLM okay. is great in that it's a free topology network in terms of Cat5. So that means that you can leave the room controller and go to the sensor and over to the photo cell, or you could do two home runs back to the room controller, whatever way you want to do it. Simplify the install, make it easy on the contractor. Okay, okay. and lastly, what do we have here? What's, what's this? Yeah, so this is uh, the LMCT. Um, so this device allows you to make programming changes in the space. Okay. Um, so for instance, if we talk about the, the sensor, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, in years past, if you look at an occupancy sensor, 
when you want to make adjustments to it via maybe a time delay change or sensitivity, you have to go to the device, right? So you got to go up the ladder, remove the faceplate off there, and then make adjustments. So now you can stand on the floor with the LMCT and just make the changes right there. Again, easy. Make, uh, make changes pretty much on the fly. Yeah, give it a whirl. So we have sensor controls, we have load configure. What does that mean? Yeah, so load configure is about assigning uh, respective devices to the load. So okay. for instance, when I, act in, when I enact a load configuration mode, I can then pair devices, maybe a switch for instance, mm -hmm. um, or a sensor to a respective load or loads in that space. Right. Um, so for instance, if you had multiple switches, you may want switch one to control switch leg A, switch two to control switch leg B. Load configuration gives you the ability to make those load assignments. Okay. Basically, you don't have dissimilar loads in one. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Daylighting configuration. Yep. Daylighting configuration is so you can make uh, adjustments to the photo cell. So you may want to set a different level in there, right? So that one. So this can talk to this. Absolutely. Oh, how cool. Now, who owns this? Is this is this initially for the contractor to install? This is for a building manager. This is for you office know, personnel. The I beauty mean, on this device, Andy, is yes. it really can go either way. Okay. Um, so the contractor will have one on the initial install, so they can make programming changes. Right. Then also a really cool lead behind for your facility engineer, for instance, right? So they can make changes as they go forward in your building, right? So they may want to adjust the sensor time delay so that lights go off sooner in a space, for instance. They okay. can do that. Thank you, Jordan. Hey, no problem. And be sure to visit your local independent electric supply today for all your watt stopper needs.